Today we're going to talk about configuring the More Industries Net Concentrator system with the free software available from More Industries. The very first thing you need to do is obtain a copy of that software, which is available with the Gilson Engineering website at gilsoneng.com. Once you've downloaded a copy of the software, it's a very simple and straightforward procedure to communicate with the device. I'm going to open up my copy of the software. And let's go ahead and begin configuring our station. The very first thing we need to do is establish what hardware we have at each location. And to do that, we click on File, New, and in this case, I'm going to start with the interface module itself, the Modbus interface module, or MIM. I'm going to establish the Modbus settings for the unit under Configuration. At this point, I can rename my station as it uh, would be appropriate. I'm going to configure for my particular needs on my Modbus address, which is 2. I'm going to set the baud rate at 19200, and we need a parity of even. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and start adding my individual I.O. modules, which I click on New, I.O. Module, and then there's various types of modules available. In this case, I need to configure an analog input module, which is the AIM. You'll see here that the unit consists of four analog input channels, and each one is configured independently. So I can click on AI Channel 1, and let's go ahead and set this up. I can configure this uh, with a primary variable name, and I'm going to call this a level input signal. I have a 4 to 20 level transmitter out there, so I'll leave this at milliamp. I have a 4 to 20 milliamp signal coming in, and I need to input uh, my scaling numbers here because I'm going to read a signal that's 0 to 30 feet. So at this point, I put 0, 30 feet. And I'll put my engineering units down here, and I've configured my first input. I can do this for each of the inputs that are available on this input module. This second one we'll call flow. It's also a 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter, and in this case it's a 0 to 200 GPM signal. 200, put my engineering units here of GPM, and I can do this for each of the inputs that are available. So on channel 3, I have a 0 to 10 volt signal coming in. That's in terms of temperature. I can then change my scaling here to 0 to 10 for my volt input. And then I'm going to scale it 0 to 250 degrees F. And I can do that for the fourth channel also. To add additional modules, I just go up to the top, click on File, New, I.O. Module, and in this case I'm going to add a temperature input module, which is the TIM. You'll have four inputs available on this unit. The same procedure uh, for channel configuration as we've done before. We can tag each input, we'll call this oven number one, and in this case I have a Type J thermocouple input, so I select thermocouple, Type J, I want it in degrees F, and in this case it's a 0 to 250 input. I can do the same thing for my scaling, enable 0 to 250, and also put my engineering units of degrees F. I can continue this for each of my inputs on that temperature input module. The unit also has available output modules, which I can select under I.O. module. Let's configure an analog output module, which is the AOM, and it's done in the very similar fashion by clicking the channel and configuring tag number, we'll call this flow. We have a output of 4 to 20 that we would like to take to another device, and the Output on out of range value is you can configure this that it will go either uh, to zero or in this case over range will go to uh, 23.6 milliamps. Output scaling is available. We'll enable that and we're going to configure this for a zero to 250 GPM flow signal. We 
can continue that for each of the channels. And if a channel is not being used, simply click on the channel not in use key and that will disable that particular input. We also have available digital ins and outs. And let's configure one of these modules. Digital input modules, the DIM. And at this case, we can take individual contact inputs and we can label each of those eight different channels. And I also have a programmable debounce time that will enable us to do some filtering on that particular contact input. In addition, I have digital outputs, IO module, in this case it's the ROM, and I can configure this unit as well. On power up, this is when I check these boxes, this means that the output will be turned on when the station powers up. I can also, on failure, configure the unit to either turn on, turn off, or hold its last value depending on what uh, I need for a particular application. I can also put tag information here for each of my channel locations as well. At this point I have my configuration established for my particular unit and what I can do since I'm working offline from the NCS I can hit file, save, and I can file save this on my hard drive as station number one. And then when I connect to the unit, I can also then download it directly to the NCS itself. At this point, the configuration has been saved and I can go about my business. Uh, if you have any additional questions or need more information, please contact us at Gilson Engineering, toll free 1-800-860-4499. Thank you for your time.